Hello. I thought it would be useful to do a few pieces on fairly high level bullying. And it goes a long way, unfortunately. This is anti-bullying week. And although everything I do on bullying, if it's got bullying in the title, uh, YouTube isn't going to like it. But you know, hey, we've got to deal with the subject. And on the one hand, there's the sort of bullying that you get in school. On the other hand, there's the bullying that you get in the workplace and specifically in places like Parliament and the big organisations like the NHS, like legal teams and so on. Obstruction to the High Court. This is something I find completely astonishing. The institution versus the individual. And... There's a barrister's letter that I've shown the other day which said you don't have a right to the Supreme Court after the Court of Appeal. And this was a case which was highlighted a few months ago by Piers Corbyn. And I don't know whether it's really gone anywhere. People have a right. People have an absolute right to pursue a case doggedly, especially if information was ignored or suppressed when the case initially came to trial. It's not common, but it's very serious. And obstructing a hearing seems both very odd and to be critical of the legal process itself. So I find it bizarre that this particular sentence came from the pen of a barrister. It was a barrister that made this statement. And I have even heard a bizarre statement that the terms and conditions of an NHS contract may not be contractual. This is madness and it has a huge impact on any form of workers' rights if that is something which can so get through the system. It needs to be challenged at every level and by everybody. It makes the case, for example, of Sir Philip Rutnam all the more understandable. Remember, he was the whistleblower who called Pretty Patel to account and said that she was bullying. And a significant amount of money was paid to silence him effectively. Pretty Patel. Pretty Patel. Uh, so why did Sir Philip Rotnam go public? Well, he seems to have gone public because there is a culture in a number of high-level government departments that should you make a fuss, should you go through the normal channels, um, you will be blacklisted, you will be pilloried in public, uh, you will be, you'll be made to look foolish. Or other charges will be manufactured and pitched at you. So the whole process of bringing the case becomes a nightmare. Now, the efforts of um, being undermined and blacklisted, they, they, there's a phrase, snitches, troublemakers, backstabber, backstabbers, to delay, to defend, to deny. Those are not my words. Those are the words of Jeremy Hunt in 2015. So Jeremy Hunt was, for example, aware that this was pretty well the routine way of dealing with people who were calling out what was wrong in the NHS. And it's not talking about doctors and nurses, it's talking about bureaucrats. As indeed was Sir Philip Rutnam. Bureaucrats, bureaucracy. And it's bureaucracy which has gone wrong, for example, in the Home Office. Closing ranks to haunt the victim who cries foul. Today we'd call it ghosting, wouldn't we? Ghosting. Ghosting. Chalking up, maybe, as I say, um, modest or manufactured offences to discredit the victim. To distract from the real issues. John Rapp. No, John Yap, sorry. John Yap. Uh, who brought a case against the Foreign Office. The Foreign Office, the FCO, went into overdrive to sabotage that case. 
and they seriously impacted the victim's mental health. Only in the end to be forced to capitulate, to be found at fault, the Foreign Office. It is sophisticated, this approach. This approach says that the institution is the victim, not the whistleblower, the institution. And we've got another example of it at the moment, where uh, Gavin Williamson, Gavin Williamson, uh, his nose out of joint because he wasn't um, invited to the funeral, because he was denied a front row seat at the funeral of Her Late Majesty the Queen. And the... Uh, the, 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 the tweets, the exchange, uh, the emails exchange or tweet exchange or whatever it was has now been published, uh, has leaked out, and it doesn't look good. We're told that he was acting out of character, that he was acting under stress. No, it seems, it seems he was deliberately doing something on the fracking vote system. He was deliberately doing something uh, to, to sabotage the system. He went out of his way to be difficult. It's not to say that Wendy Morton herself was immaculate. But this was spite, not accident. This was calculated. Now, am I saying that Gavin Williamson is a bully? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Am I saying that Wendy Morton is a bully? No, not particularly, but I'm saying that there is a culture of bullying in Parliament and that this has seeped into a culture of bullying anybody who protests, anybody who raises an issue in any of the great ministers of state. Any of them. And the, and, and the approach is exactly as laid out by Jeremy Hunt in 2015. Delay, defend, deny and uh, gang together to defend the minister against snitches, troublemakers, and backstabbers. His words, not mine. And he is now the Chancellor of the Exchequer. So he knows exactly what he's talking about. And thankfully now, so do we. It's time to stand up the individual against the institution. We cannot allow institutions to steamroller over individuals, particularly when they are wrong, particularly when they are dishing out jobs for the boys, particularly when they are not working effectively. I don't make a single comment in this video about the Home Office. Maybe I should. But it's the principle of the thing, the principle of the thing. And I think um, I, I will make a series of these and I will try and get a little bit more detailed and I'm going to try and reach out to people who have experience of this and as far as it is possible to put videos out on YouTube about um, legal issues, I will see what I can do. But it is time, it is time that we stood up. We stood up to the bullying in office because it needs to be challenged. It needs to be challenged if necessary, every day, in work, in the office, in government, and of course in school.